And welcome to a special recording of Table Talk. Let me remind you that the team at UMI is here to help you find and use the best information, expertise, and finance. Our role is to help your businesses go further. My name is Pascal Pintoni. With my colleague, Kanta Ma, we're pleased to welcome our very special guest, Gareth James from Clockwork Eye. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Gareth. Hello there. Hi, yeah. Um, for those of you that don't know Gareth James, he's um, a partner at Clockwork Eye um, and they specialise in video marketing and video production. He was also a trainer on the Digital Knowledge Exchange programme as well. So you may have detected therefore from this introduction that the subject of today is video marketing, YouTube and everything else we're going to talk about. Um, so Gareth, before we move on to the Q&A as such, I'm wondering, when did you start? When did you hold that first video camera that set you on your journey? Well, um, actually, I was quite old. Uh, I was in my 30s when I first started uh, doing video because I was in the army previous to that. So I spent 12 years in the army uh, fixing guns. I was an armorer. And, but I always wanted to go on stage. So when I came out of the army, I went to a local amateur theater. And basically, uh, from there... I thought, oh, this is interesting. I like theatre. I wonder how they do it on telly. And then I went and did some extras work on Emmerdale. I was Jim Broadbent's driver in the train robbery, believe it or not. Uh, I was in Jonathan Strange, Mr. Norrell. I had a line in that. That was quite interesting. But then that got me thinking, I, I preferred the behind the camera kind of stuff. I was fascinated by the, the, the crew and everything. So I started a little film club up um, here in um, Keithley Way. And there was a few of us, and we used to make silly little document, well, not documentary, little um, um, advert competition entries. Like we did a Doritos one, and we did uh, an Azus laptop one, and, and these kind of things. And and it went from there really. And um, it just it was fascinating to me because I, I actually worked in IT at the time, and then I was made redundant, and um, I stuck with what I knew, which was the IT. But a friend of mine used to teach film and media. Um, and he's now my business partner. So he basically got made redundant as well a couple of years later in 2011. And I said, you know, this video stuff is really quite interesting. And there's a lot of businesses out there who could benefit from what we do just for fun. So we turned it into a business. And uh, we don't do as many fun things as anymore. Though. That's the problem. And that's where it all goes, falls down. But anyway. So yeah, that's how I got into it. Completely random, strange route. But so I'm wondering, with your you know, kind of uh, past as an armorer, did you use that at all in some action films, or have you done yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had um, basically a couple of guys were making their own film, um, and I went and did some acting for them. And um, basically, they said, "Oh, we want to do this house raid for this. It's like a gangster film they made." Um, and I said, okay, so I, I also did, a, when I came out of the army, started doing a bit of airsoft stuff and I knew a few guys. So I got in touch with a couple of guys. We got some weapons together. We went down, we got in touch with the, with the police, told them what we were doing and everything. That's the main thing is communication when you're doing stuff like that. Uh, I went down, we had a house, which was a friend of ours. She was also an actress in the, in the film. And then we did this raid. And uh, that was really quite interesting because then I had to show them how to basically breach doors and go through and all this kind of stuff, which was uh, really good fun, really, I must admit. I gotta go back into acting. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, excellent, well, whilst uh, we still have you as a, um, you know, kind of great trainer and, and mentor for the, for the program. Um, so what we've done is kind of split that conversation to three modules, if you like. So mm -hmm. module one, I call this a challenge, and we'll discuss with you this idea of perhaps people still feeling a bit hesitant about video marketing, video production, and uh, where you think we are with that. Then the second segment would be around the solutions around mm -hmm tackling this challenge and within that we'll talk to you about the practical steps around video production, the practical steps around running a YouTube channel and so on and so forth. And then we'll close on the third segment, which I call the toolkit. Maybe your advice about some of the essential kit you need to have, both physical and digital. And then we'll close the um, kind of an open Q&A. We've got some questions to, to ask you. So let me begin with what I, what I mentioned, the first segment, which is a challenge. Um, I mean, you've been involved with a program and with your business, dealing with customers and so on. 
and there's still some nervousness about um, you know filming either being in front or behind the camera uh, where do you think that's coming from and what is your view about this in general um i think there's there's several uh, elements to this uh, which just it's basically for, for me there's there's a lack of understanding now we, we now live in an age where um basically quality is lower quality is more acceptable yeah um and let me explain what i mean by that before we used to judge the the the, the visuals and the audio and stuff like that so you'd go and watch a film and you know i, I know personally when i watched play which project i thought it was absolutely awful uh with the whole shaky camera and everything like that but with what people are putting on youtube and stuff it's becoming more and more acceptable i mean we're using webcams now to actually produce content you know to promote the, the video marketing and uh, the the yumi program and stuff so people seem to be able to do more but i still think that they should still try and be more professional but they have this i call it the fear they have a fear of, of, of a lot of elements with regards to video. Um, people see, they, they put it on a pedestal and they don't need to because at the end of the day, video is just a medium. It's, it's like a photograph. It's like a piece of text. Um, and, and like all mediums, it has to be used. It's not going to, you don't make a video, put it on YouTube, and then all of a sudden the phone's going to ring. You know, that's like having a thousand flyers, putting them on your kitchen table and expecting the phone to ring. You've got to go door to door. You've got to post them, you know. But the thing is, the innovation, the, these smartphones have changed the way now we can market. And quite simply, you can use the cameras on these. They're, they're, they're fantastic. The camera on this has actually got more pixel rate than um, our DSLRs that we use. Um, you know, unless you're going into 4K and stuff, but the, obviously there's limitations with these. But for doing blogs and talking to people, yeah, they're, then they're fantastic. Uh, a in, small investment for a, a microphone, a tripod, uh, and then understanding what you're going to make. And that's another fear is I don't know what to record. So people will set it all up with all the good intentions in the world and they'll stand there and they'll, um, I uh, just uh, want to... Uh, and then they feel bad in themselves for not being able to portray their knowledge effectively. But there are so many simple tricks that can be used that you can be more effective. The, the, the first thing is try not to say too much. Keep it short. Keep it to a nice short blog. You know, um, <clears throat> if you are using your phone, um, I recommend you put. I can, don't know if you can see there, but I recommend you put a little. A little sticker just above the lens because we see a lot of people um, when I'm, I'm doing this now it probably may be noticeable but I put you under my camera but I'm still looking at you too because I'm drawn to you too to look mm -hmm. but a lot of people look at themselves in the phone and you can see that so simple tricks like put the dot and look at the dot and that way you're looking at the lens you're looking at your audience uh, other ones are uh, to get post-its and put because the thing is any anything that I put here is not going to be picked up by the lens anyway so i could put post-its with notes on and that way i can basically talk confidently with bullet points so simple little tricks like that will get the confidence going because what people do is they put the camera on and they just start and they've not planned and we all know in filmmaking the pre-production stage is the most important and can be sometimes quite lengthy you know, we see all these movies come to fruition. They take three months to film. They take two years to plan. You know, and the same same thing goes for you for a simple blog. Plan it, make notes, talk, decide what you're going to talk about. And that's something else that people struggle with is understanding what to talk about. So, our first rule is don't talk about yourself because nobody will watch it. Nobody's interested in in watching you talk about you. But if you talk about the problems that you know your business solves if you sell widgets don't talk about the widget talk about the problems that the widget solves and that way people will type into google i don't know how to do this and they see your video saying this is how you do this um, but then there's a couple of rules we use there where rule the uh, rule, rule four we've got 10 rules rule four is don't give too little because you don't annoy your audience and rule five is don't give so much that they don't they don't need you anymore 
So there is a gray area. But finding content, talk to clients. Ask them what kind of thing they would like to hear. Um, think about the questions you're asked about when you're networking, about the problems you solve. You know, and in, interrogate Google, which is a trick you taught me, Pascal, uh, a long time ago, a long, long time ago. Yeah, Google will give you answers. It just, you've got to understand how Google works, really. Um, it, it, it's not a difficult thing to do. I, I haven't got time to show you now, but um, it's not a difficult thing to do, but it is an easy thing to do to find out what questions people are typing into Google. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of elements there. And the biggest one is fear. And a lot of people think it's going to cost a fortune. And yeah, so thanks very much. That was like a perfect exact summary of everything we're going to tackle with you um, in a moment. So let's go back to, to fear. Did you want to ask something? Yes, I was just going to say, obviously, it is a confidence matter. That, like you yeah. said, initially first starting out, what would you recommend in the length of time of videos for someone that's starting? Well, what I say to people, one of the things people say to me is, oh, I don't like being in front of the camera. Yeah. Um, so what I say to them is, it, 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 basically, it's only digital, okay? We all have a 60-second pitch. When we, people say, oh, what do you do? Yeah, oh, well, I you know, help businesses make more money, blah, blah, blah. Um, we all have a 60-second pitch. If you haven't got a 60-second pitch for your business, then I recommend you get one. So my advice is, and what I say to people all the time is, set the camera up on a tripod and do your 60-second pitch on your own, in a room, doesn't matter about your backdrop, it doesn't matter about your lighting or anything. Look at it, watch it, laugh at it, delete it. Yeah. Do it again, yeah? Mm -hmm. Do it again, look at it, laugh at it, delete it. Do it again, watch it with somebody else, laugh at it, delete it. By the time you get to, and I pretty much guarantee this, by the time you get to the fourth or fifth time you do it, you'll start saying, well, it's better than the first one. Because until you've got that first one, you'll never have something to compare it to. So lengthwise, 60 seconds to 60 to 90 seconds. Now, statistically, and we all know statistic lies and all the rest of it, but statistically, Google say that with business videos, with business blog uh, videos, at 1 minute 35, nobody's watching anymore. And that's kind of where people, if you actually, when you do a lot of content and you look at longer videos, you'll see that the 1 minute 35, 40 seconds is where really you get a majority of drop off because our attention spans are so small uh, and getting worse. So effectively, you know, if you look at six, 60 seconds is a sweet spot, 90 seconds at a push is, is my advice. You can do some content and we do, we do what we call info bursts with some clients who uh they do it's 30 to 45 seconds and it's just uh, just passing a bit of information and that's it so you know it, it, lengthwise it's like that but the first thing is get over getting in front of the camera and do it um, so the um so the, the, what we we know from the workshop that we ran the three of us is people will say i don't like the sound of my voice i don't like the way i look mm -hmm. da, 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 da. and and in a way, through only through practice does it become a means to an end, which is just a, um, a bit of marketing material, albeit it's moving image with sound, but you, you find a way to disconnect and, and eventually it doesn't matter anymore. As, have you found that to be the case? Yes, totally. Uh, the, 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 the whole, I don't like the sound of my own voice thing, I, I always say to people, if you like to listen to yourself, you're a narcissist. So that's already, uh, you know, not, not a good thing. So basically, I don't like the sound of my own voice, but you just get over it um, because you have to. Um, I think I sound slow and really well she when I talk, but I don't, you know, but that's because when I hear myself back, I hear different. Because when, we, when we're talking, we hear through our throats. And we also hear rebound. Um, so when you do hear yourself, like, oh, I don't like it. But you've got to get over that. that that's a fact of life. Um, so, yeah, with, with, with all that, um, I've forgotten the second half of your question. Sorry. Well, so, so then eventually there's almost like you disconnect yourself from the yes. and the sound. And I would say, I suppose, all of us after a few years, all you see is a bit of marketing material that you can then critique and judge. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, you do disconnect. After a while, once you've got over the hurdles of personal issues of like, I don't like myself on camera and all the rest of it, then you start to talk more confidently and, and you start to convey your message better and then you have good marketing materials. Uh, people, say, uh, people say, oh, I say, um, too much. Yeah, but 
if you actually plan ahead and you have your bullet points and stuff and you know what you're talking about, then you're not going to earn so much. If you try and go off the top of the head, you are. Uh, because another thing of human nature is we don't know when to shut up. Um, and you think to yourself, I've got to make a video about this and I'm just going to keep talking and talking and talking and talking until the point you just run yourself into a rut. Um, so plan it. Know what you're going to say. Get the message out there. Short, sharp and to the point, you know. Um, and that way, yes, you have good marketing material. People... People buy from people is the saying that we all use, uh, and it's very true. So when you, uh, the example I like to use really quickly is, if I'm in a reception area and I've watched a video, I've come to meet you, Pascal, and I've watched a video and uh, with you in it, and I thought, right, I phoned up and I said, oh, I want to make an appointment, come see you. Um, brilliant, fantastic, come in, we'll meet on the tip back. I come in, I'm sitting in your reception waiting for you. I see you coming and getting up. I'm already getting up because I know you. Yeah, in my head, we've never met before, but in my head, I know you. The other scenario is I've never seen you. You coming down the stairs, I look at you thinking, I wonder if that's him, you know? So immediately we meet, I introduce myself to you or I say hello to you like we already have met. And that's the psychology behind the marketing, video marketing, is that whole, you know, oh, nice to meet you or, oh, 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 hello there. You know, that, that, that awkward seven seconds that everybody talks about in psychology when you meet people for the first time. I don't have that because I've seen you. Now, you as the person who's made the video have to learn to react like um, famous people. Oh, nice to see you too, <laughs> you know, and, and, and basically react that, that uh, friendly and effectively. Thank you very much, Kenta. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank so you. So just on that, then, we're going to close on, on the, the challenge and the fear. The, the other thing that we heard through um, the workshop, if you remember, was people being nervous by the judgment of others, um, whether yeah. that be their um, customers, competitors, and even their peers. Have you found ways, again, to help someone work through that? Um, basically, the, the way you work through that is that you, 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 there, there are three types of people. There are three types of people who will comment in this world uh, or will judge yeah there are people who will say really good job i like that thank you for the information there are people who will say i don't agree with you now those two types of people you should always respond to so if you've done a video you put it onto your linkedin your social media whatever and you get people who, who naysayers and all the rest of it uh or people who comment saying when they comment in the positive you say well thank you very much you know when they comment in the negative you say well what would you do how would you approach it so you engage with conversation because creating content is about engaging in conversation and it's about talking to people yeah so being judged is going to happen there is no real um solution to that you're going to be judged you know in the positive in the negative and the third type i did say this three is your idiots you will always have trolls out there um, and, and those trolls will always, no matter what you say to them, they will always say something completely the negative. And my advice is just to ignore them. If they're offensive, obviously report them to the platforms that are, that are there. But a lot, of the, a lot of the time they just sit in there um, trying to stir and, and that's all they've got. So ignore them and they go away. But yeah, negative and positive comments or negative criticisms and, and also praise, you should, you should address those and you should engage with them because you're going to be judged. It doesn't matter. I mean, I've had conversations on LinkedIn in text where we've discussed video marketing and we haven't agreed on certain things. We don't all agree. That's the world we live in. It's nice to have disagreement because you can sometimes learn. You know, even if you do fight your corner, you can still go away going, oh, actually, I learned something there. But that's just the way of life, really. Excellent. Thank you very much. So can we move on to the second segment then, <laughs> the, the solutions? So you talk about planning. You talk about pre-production. Uh, I remember yeah. in the workshop, you say, you know, grab the pen first, not the camera. Yeah. So what kind of videos should one plan for, you know, and, and, and how do you plan those? So what, what are the kind of videos that work well and how do you plan for those? Well, the, the, really, um, when it comes to video marketing, you want to engage people uh, at their problem point. So people, I, I always say nobody at lunchtime is going to go and watch solicitors videos. 
while eating their sandwich. You know, there's a good solicitor's video, I think I'll watch it. But people who are needing legal advice, if they're getting divorced or something like that, they will Google questions like, what are my rights as a father? Uh, what reasons do I need to get divorced? That kind of thing. Um, I always use divorce as the example because it's something everybody can understand. Uh, but basically, they'll, they will Google those problems. Uh, and if they get your video advising them or helping them, then they're going to watch it. But otherwise, they're never going to watch a video on divorce. It, it doesn't make sense. So content-wise, I always say, uh, that your content, you, sh you should demonstrate your expertise, yeah, as one format, because there are more, more than one format. So demonstrate your expertise by talking about questions that people are asking, yeah, so the, right, so you, you're in a bad place, you want to know what your rights are as a parent, yeah, this is what I advise you to do kind of thing. But again, remember, don't give too little that you annoy your audience, don't give too much that they don't need you anymore. Um, so basically, th that for video marketing encompasses it. Now, there is other content. For example, if you're doing a presentation, you could make content for that presentation. Um, remember, you've got a fixed audience. They're not going to get up and walk away. On YouTube, they will leave. But in, in a presentation, they will stay. But don't bore them. <laughs> don't, don't go into the presentation with a 15-minute video, which really isn't very interesting. So think your content through. And the, the other one is personality. For me, um, the, the, putting a personality onto your business is, is, is quite important. Uh, we do, we've been doing for years now, whenever we go to a client, we film. When we're leaving, I literally get the mobile out with um, the selfie stick. Mick is always driving. I do it, put it on and usually we're absolutely drained because we've been doing a day's filming and you know it's like Pascal it's hard work so basically we're usually drained and we just do a nonsense video uh, where we say well we, what we've been doing what we're going to be doing and all that. and it's just personality on the business and we actually get people saying where's the next one <laughs> where's when, when are you doing another video in the car People have been naming our videos, you know, uh, those in-car videos, and they've been giving them nicknames and stuff, just because it's a bit of fun, it's a bit of personality, and that that doesn't hurt, you know, that gets you out there. But yes, so me for me, it, it depends on the scenario the video is going to be used for. But for your video marketing, demonstrate your expertise, help people, you know, um, because quite simply, you can't sell anymore. Okay, um, if if we were related, yeah. And I said, I said to you, uh, hey guys, get yourself up to Bambra. It's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely lovely. 20, 25 years ago, you would have said, who did you book with? Yeah, what was it like? You talk to me about it and you'd probably have gone. Now, even if we were related and the best of friends, you'd Google it. Because you can. So, oh, there's Bambra thing. Let's have a look. And you'd Google it. Um, so you can't sell. You can only help and advise. That, that's my that's my opinion. That's my advice to people: is don't don't ever try and sell any videos. Just try and help people, and personality. Interesting, because um, obviously you and I have gone through the the evolution of, of video. So mm. you know, I started when it was still VHS cassettes and moved on right. to um, CD-ROM DVDs and so on and so forth. And in the process. I could see the decline in the um, in terms of the appeal of the sales video. I mean, when we did um, videos in the late '90s, early 2000s, there were still sales videos. You would, you know, uh, but you could tell little by little that there was just no longer the, the same positive reaction. And on the contrary, when you were trying to you were trying to do a bit of help, um, you know, content, helpful content, or even what you described the behind the scenes stuff, which is the roundup of the day or or you know, literally showing a bit more about what goes on in the, in the office or in the, on the shop floor, that got a greater reaction. So we tend to move from uh, selling videos to almost that kind of um, social video, mm. creating uh, this idea of the video is a precursor to the future relationship we're going to have with me. And this is the kind of people that, people that we are. We are uh, helpful. We love answering questions. Yeah. We um, don't take ourselves too seriously we look after you really well and and it's been interesting where there's still that tension people saying well let, let's stick to um the selling bit because that's more comfortable to us 
we don't want to show, uh, and which is interesting, the future customer experience. And I think those who do uh, actually demonstrate the, who they are as uh, human beings and how they yeah. interact tend to be a lot more successful online. Yeah, especially with um, social media, uh, the way it's gone. Um, you know, if you think about it, um, Facebook was only really created, it was, was actually launched on February the 4th in 2004. So it's not actually been out there that long with regards to industry, but look at the way it's transformed from just pictures and text to now constant video content. I think in 2016, they actually changed their algorithms to focus on video as the primary medium. And I know, for example, that if you go into the creator studio, it says you should be, it, it actually says you should be publishing one video a week um, on, on, when you're on your business page. So yeah, you're right. The, the, the transition and, and the personality is very, very important. I think, you know, if you can get, and I look at a lot of the LinkedIn videos and stuff and you, you see, you see some where you're thinking, I'm not going to watch that. And you see others where you're like, I'm going to watch that. I'm going to watch that just because I'm going to follow them because they, they've got a personality. They, they, they're interested, you know? So, yeah, it's a bit of, bra bit of, bit of, bit of uh, branding there as well. Look, you know, uh, we I would never that. be frightened to, uh, I'm not sure we agreed to it, but that's fine. <laughs> um, never be afraid to get a bit of branding in. <laughs> So any further question on the, the set of planning and producing the right videos? Yeah, I think um, that kind of moves us nicely into um, creating the videos. How do you keep them professional and making sure that they're not looking like a home video? The, the, this, is, this is a very, very interesting um, question and point, to be honest with you, because we, we do training where we teach people how to film. But the one thing we don't do is teach them how to edit. Uh, because quite simply, editing is not something that you will learn in a day. Uh, you can you can you can understand the basics of editing in a day, but actually physically doing it is in uh, considering the software that you know you might be using might be quite technical. Um, there, there are other things such as you know the, your cuts and your fades and your transitions. Then there's the adding images because. Uh, when, when you when you edit you you literally are taking so the video content the image content the text con and you're layering up like this and they all stagger out in different areas and then you're squishing them down into what becomes the final video so teaching editing is really really difficult um the the we offer an editing service, which we basically, because we, we teach clients how to film and then they upload the footage and we edit it for them. So that takes a lot of the technical issues out. But there are, and um, we're going to lead into the tools and stuff here, there are products out there like Mabavi, uh, which is a, a very simple editing tool. Um, one of the easiest things you can do is sit down if you really want to do it yourself and and just get footage and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice because it's not an easy skill um editors actually get paid quite a quite a lot of money and it's because once you practice 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 you'll get better at it you could also create yourself a template which then you can slot your footage into um one of the one of the one of the things we always try and teach our clients is you don't have to do the take in one you can do a couple of different sections but then what we do is we use the edit to break those sections up so that they don't just start around like this you know like like max headroom if you remember him um but basically yeah the, the, you could get these utilities they're they're not expensive uh, I think Mavavi, the one that I do recommend to people, is about seventy pounds or something. So it's not an expensive thing, but you do have to invest the time, and you have to invest the time learning. And the easiest way to learn is to do. Um, so yes, yeah, so you 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 can do it yourself. My advice would be to look at working with a, a, a video marketing or videographer company and save yourself quite a lot of time um with regards to the edit um but keep it simple as well that's that's another thing i would say to people don't don't try and film something that's just you know way too adventurous for yourself in the first instance you know start off slowly even if you're doing it as a one take and topping and tailing and what i mean by that is 
basically just taking the front and the end, tidying it up and putting the contact information and the, and the name bar. You know, there's one, there's one thing that I always say to people, you've got with video content, you've got five seconds to engage with people. So don't waste that with a really cool introduction graphic. Yeah. Five seconds is all we've got. And if you've got a ball bouncing across the screen and then da -da 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 -da, people will drop off. And when you look at your analytics, especially in YouTube, which has got fantastic analytics, you can see how much of your audience are actually dropping off. And if, you're, if you've got 50% of your audience dropping off in the first 10 seconds, your first 10 seconds is rubbish, you know? And you need to address that. So even when you are doing your edits and you are making your content, you still have to analyze the results. You know, don't keep going blindly along. Don't be afraid to go in and say, right, how is this video performing? And if you change something and all of a sudden it doesn't work, go, go, go back. Don't be frightened to say, right, well, I'll go back. Even if you like it. <laughs> yeah, oh, th that's a very good point. You know, even if you like it, you need to go back. Uh, yeah. And in a way, to, you made me think, you know, that those videos should be looked at and, and refined the same way you would refine text. Uh, yes. Ultimately, it is more complicated to go back into a video a final project and change things. But to your point, whilst it's uh, understandable to be inspired by the film industry and to want to yeah. have uh, opening credits, I think in a world of video marketing, which is a close cousin, but very, very different, uh, you've got to be careful and, and move very quickly. Just yep. as I was listening to you, um, do you have some advice about people using their mobile phones to record the footage that they then may give to an editor in terms yeah. of, um, you know, how do you use a mobile phone better? Well, I mean, the first thing is you, you've, got, you've got to invest in um, a tripod and a microphone. That, that's my advice. Now, there, there, there are several things, okay? So I'm going to get a little bit technical here. Basically, I use a Samsung. Uh, I got an S7. It's uh, uh, fine for my purpose. I, I could upgrade if I wanted to, but I like it. Uh, one of the things I like about the Samsung phones is the fact that you can actually use voice activation as well. Um, so I could turn on my camera to say record video and it will actually start recording. Um, the, the, as I say, use the little little sticker to make sure you look at your audience not at yourself um but there are several i've got a couple of things to hand so basically a lavalier microphone um which is a very basic microphone it's a five meter lead with a with a tight clip mic on the end uh but the important thing here is to realize that mobile phones um have different inputs now if you're using a, an iphone I think it's seven and above, then you've got to go with the, um, the, 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 the lightning connector that, that comes with it. And they released it without an audio jack uh, after the six, I believe. But one of the things that uh, I'll point out here is that a normal microphone has a three millimeter jack, but it's only got, I don't know if you're actually gonna be able to see that, but it's only got two black bands and three silver collars. And quite simply, that's left and right audio and microphone. Yeah, so that's a standard jack. So it's a standard connection. Mobile phones have four. So if you look there, mobile phone has got four silver collars because we have on our earplugs and stuff, we have the data pressel. So you press the button to say, okay, Google, and then all the rest of it. Um, so you have to convert between, you have to convert uh, from standard to mobile phone. Now, I know this doesn't work on all mobile phones. Um, for example, I don't think the HTC's, the conversion doesn't work, but on the Samsung's and on the iPhone 6 and below, it does. So getting a bit technical, you do really need to speak to somebody. I would suggest you speak to somebody who knows what they're talking about before you go buy in loads of stuff. Uh, radio mics, for example, if you think, oh, I'll get a radio mic, they are very expensive. Um, a, a decent one will, call, will set you back at least 450 to 500 pound. Um, whereas this, I think, is about uh, the, the, the cabled mic is about um, 30, 40 pounds on Amazon or something. A tripod uh, it will cost you 30, 40 quid. Um, very simple. And you'll need to get a, uh, a clamp for the tripod, which basically I haven't got to hand. But a uh, little simple clamp, screws onto the top, stretches out and your mobile phone sits in it. So 
one of the things that, that we always say to people is when you're using your mobile phone, it's uh, what they call a digital zoom, not an optical zoom. So basically what that means is with a DSLR, for example, you turn the drum and you get closer, but you don't actually physically move. Uh, whereas with this, you have to actually physically go closer or you can use the digital zoom. I don't recommend using the digital zoom because it'll pixelate um, after a while and it'll be not as good quality. But literally pick your tripod up and move it closer to your subject. Uh, if you're doing blogs and stuff like that, try and get creative with your background. Uh, if you do, like we've got a client who does health and safety in construction, they film themselves, they upload and we do the edit. Um, and quite simply, they go on construction sites and they make the blogs in the construction sites. You know, and when it was snowing, they went out and they did videos in the snow about snow. So it, it's really about using your imagination, you know. But you can do it. Selfie stick, very simple little tool. If you want to go take the dog for a walk, do a video about something why not i do i run a film festival and i do the, the the blogs for that i do with the microphone plugged into the selfie the camera on the selfie stick and i'll just walk the dog talking about what we've got coming up um because you know it's the film festival it's not video marketing um and then other tools that you could use i've got a small light to the side of me i'm going to now change everything so this is this doesn't cost a fortune. I'm not going to shine it at the camera, but you can see there. Small light, which basically um, is LED, gets brighter, gets dimmer. Not expensive again. I'm using that because when I'm sat, I need to light a bit my this side of my face, otherwise I get too dark. Um, and yeah, so it's it's fairly uh, um, straightforward. I think I just banged my uh, I'm gonna put my camera back like that there's other way the window is gonna go so that gives me a, a great segue to talk about composition then since you've knocked your, your camera I did yes I, I, I pressed so. it. if you were to do um, let's say you know giving advice or, or whatever um, using actually um, our, our framing today what's yeah. the, the, the best position for someone and how much space you want to leave sides sideways and up and down um, thing is, uh, uh, what I've noticed here is I've got a little bit of headspace. I'm, I'm moving around, so I keep probably going out to frame slightly. That doesn't matter. It's not like you're going to go, where's the top of his head gone? You know, it, it's basically, I, I frame myself like this. I've actually got sunburn, so I'm really red. Um, I'm, I'm ginger, so I, I go like that. So two days in the sun and I was like, I'm lobster red. Um, so no, no, no lighting is going to help me there, I'm afraid. But... Um, Basically, the framing I did, I've got like, this is my kind of filming area where I, I tend to make short blogs and stuff. This this is a bit of a trophy wall where we've done projects and everything. Actually, your the Digital Enterprise Top 100 uh, lanyard <laughs> is just there, actually. So, uh, but that's all related to stuff. So I, I, I designed that to be a backdrop. I mean, it's, it's out of focus slightly as well. So I've got a bit of selective focus going on. But if you're stuck uh, for, for, for a background, then go with a plain wall uh, and then edit your logo and your information into it. Make it jazzier, put yourself to one side and then you can edit here. You can do what you want to this space, you know? But, you know, if you stand in the middle, then you're gonna be just a plain wall and you've got no, no room for movement, you know? Um, another thing we say, you know, don't, don't, look, don't look out of frame and you do see it, you do see it. And, you know, it's quite, it's quite weird because you're like, ah. Oh. Um, so you always look into frame, you know, when you're talking. So I'm still looking at the camera, but my body language is into frame. So my logo is here and the rest of it. But if you can get out, like our health and safety people, get out on the construction site, get out, which is relevant to your business, go to places which are relevant. You know, if you've got a big business with a nice, with a nice logo on the, on the, on the building outside, go out into the yard, do a video blog with it behind you, get your branding in. It's important. You've got to get branding in. <laughs> <laughs> you can't overdo it though. You can't overdo yeah. it. <laughs> but you're right because, um, I mean, you don't need to be careful not to talk about filmmaking too much, but uh, no. they will tell you that the environment or the landscape is a character in its own right and that's why people yeah. spend so much time in set design and, and, and that kind of things so, or at least putting mm -hmm. some effort into it so i know that kind of wanted to ask you about youtube before our time okay 
Yeah, um, so just really wanted to touch around best practices. So like obviously posting the videos is really important on your YouTube channel, but in terms of tagging, promotion, could you elaborate a bit on that? Yeah, certainly. A, a lot of uh, the, YouTube is the, mis, is the biggest misunderstood social media platform, yet it has the second amount of follow, second largest amount of followers with Facebook being the first one. Um, and basically people think that uh, if I do a video and I upload it to YouTube, I have a channel and that's it. Yeah, they're, 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 they're way off. We, I've got an example of a, a video we did for a client five years ago and their web people put it onto their YouTube channel. YouTube channel is very basic. It wasn't really done. They just stuck it up and that was it, you know. And we uploaded the same video onto a channel we run called The Business Channel four years ago, so a year later. Now, they've had to date just under a thousand views. Okay. We've had 110,000 views. Okay. And it's the same video. So why is it outperforming the other one 10 to 1? Well, quite simply, it's because when we put it up, we put, we did, um, we used the correct titling, you know, people will, the, the, the people, our, the way that we react to YouTube videos is quite simply thumbnail, title, and basically that kind of guides us. Yeah. Also, if you obviously subscribe or like, or follow somebody, if you, if you like their content, then you'll be drawn to that anyway. But the, in, the, in immediately it'll be thumbnail and um, title. So if you've got the skill set, you can change the thumbnail and you can make it more interesting. Now don't use clickbait. Yeah, uh, clickbait being uh, some, uh, an image that doesn't represent the content whatsoever, you know, um, which makes me go, oh, no, I want to watch that. Yeah, um, but your title is the most important part. Now, when I talk, when I teach you to, to people, I always tell them to think of YouTube in two elements, okay? YouTube, your channel is like the BBC. It's your channel, okay? So you make it look nice, you make it look pretty, you put the correct text, text information in there because Google bots can't actually watch videos, but they literally go off the text that you input into your about us and all the rest of it in the description, etc. So your channel, you have to actually configure correctly so that it's recognized as a channel that does, what does it do? Video marketing, okay, I understand that. It's called Clockwork Eye Video Marketing. Okay, I get it, yeah? So the channel is like the BBC, but then the BBC has programs, which is our videos. It's equivalent to our videos, yeah? And the BBC promotes their videos, yeah? So you'll be listening to the radio and you'll hear about the, the, the what's, what's it called? Peaky Blinders is coming on and all this is happening at the moment. So you have to do the same with your videos, yeah? You have to label them correctly, good titling. Most of the best titles are actually questions or statements. So let's go back to the divorce ex uh, example, yeah? What are your rights as a parent? Okay, yeah, if, I, if you can relate it to what people are typing in on Google as well, even better, because it's linking it in the Google brain as well. You know, one of my rights as a parent, boom, oh, there's a video about that, you know, and it, it kind of lists it better. Then your description. And what people don't do is they don't have a, they don't have a, they don't focus on the description. No, nobody reads it. But the first 120 characters show up on a Google search. So they're important. And if you put about you or just leave it as uh, nonsense, then it's not going to hook in because when the Google result comes up, you have the thumbnail, the title, and the, the 120 characters, which immediately the brain takes in. So your first 120 characters are important. But the other thing is linking back and linking back to your website, to your social media, to other things, because it likes to associate content with other content thing is about google and, and this is the, the this is the most simplest way i can think of explaining them is they like people who do stuff on the internet if you don't do stuff on the internet then they, they kind of ignore you if you do stuff and you tell google that you're doing stuff then it goes all oh, right you're there and it kind of says it says hello type thing um but yeah so 
the description is very important. Then keywords, again, people use single words, keywords. And, you know, and sometimes it's, it's almost lazy because you've got 500 characters and people will go video, video marketing, video training, I'll do. And they won't even focus on the constant, uh, concentrate on it. You can, in the keywords, you can use things like, you know, go back to the divorce, you know, what am I right as a parent? You can put it in there again. But you can use more longer string keywords than you can use the, than, than single words. Single words are not really much use. The next thing that I always say to people is to basically use um, the end screen, um, the end screen element of it, which basically allows you to say, this is my next video. Now, we've all watched videos on YouTube. We all fall down the rabbit hole. Yeah. But why do you want them to fall down somebody else's rabbit hole rather than yours so if you're doing one of my rights as a parent and at the end it says next video uh is about the divorce process am i going to watch it if i'm getting divorced and i've just watched the video on my rights as a parent through divorce i'm probably going to watch that so i'm going to be retained in your rabbit hole and i'm going to get to know you more uh, and also contact information in your video has to be in, has to be edited in. So the final element I always say to people, which is neglected, is the um, captions or uh, subtitles. If people neglect them, six percent of the population, I believe, are deaf. So you're neglecting six percent of the population, who are still potentially your some of them are still your target market. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you're not only telling people who can't hear what the video is about, you're also telling Google, because Google, who, who owns YouTube, they have uh, the auto um, subtitle element, because Google tries to understand what your video is about. Now, if your brand name is confusing to Google, it will call you something else and will do you no favors. It could even swear, because um, it doesn't understand. Uh, and I have seen it. Uh, there's, a, there's a company that do, I'm not going to name them, who do office rentals. Um, and in one of their videos, I contacted them and said, you know, you do, do you realize you, you're not doing your subtitles? And in one of your videos, it says, we like to steal clients. So basically, understand it, going in and reviewing it. And it's only a case of going in, reviewing it, changing the grammar, changing the spelling on certain things, timings. Yeah. And then saving that. It's not a difficult process. So I would always advise people to do the subtitles correctly. But the other thing is, and the other thing is, which is, which is this is my opinion, I think that Google's auto-detect uh, voice-to-text is far superior to Facebook's. Yeah, now LinkedIn doesn't have one, but. So if you do your subtitles once in YouTube, you can download the SRT file that Facebook requires, and then when you upload your video to Facebook natively, you can use the same file. Just remember the Facebook of a different naming convention. Upload the same file and you've done the job for two platforms once using Google's voice to text. So it's, it's not really that difficult. But yes, so with regards to YouTube, focus on the right things, but also focus on your channel, you know, and tell Google what your channel is about. Excellent. Well, I'm pretty sure you're going to be rewinding and watching that again, taking notes. Uh, <laughs> advice. No, well, they could be calling really me. Really <laughs> now, sadly, our time uh, together is coming to mm -hmm. an end very, very soon. Yep. Just to close on, uh, if I could take advantage of your, of your time with us, you mentioned Movavi as part of the, of, of the toolkit, in addition to the yeah. other, um, recording kit. Any other kind of online platforms or apps that can make life a little easier? Um, we tend to, we, we, when we... Um, I tend to say to people use Mavavi. I, in particular, I like Mavavi's um, screen grab uh, capability. It, it's it's very good for if you do online software or if you do anything online, you can actually create video content showing how to. We we do it. We've got tutorials for our clients, which are basically how to do this on YouTube, how to do that, and it's just screen grab, which is fantastic. But also, Mavavi's got the editing suite, which is good. Uh, one for me for YouTube that I do recommend is Tube Buddy. Now, there is a free element to TubeBuddy, um, but you don't get, you obviously don't get the full extensive uh, abilities of it. For example, we're talking about keywords earlier. Now, if you have the paid version, 
then basically you can go in and um, the you can go in and put in search keywords and put topic divorce and it will search YouTube the web and come back with all these different keywords with which have been ranked which is brilliant because you go click 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 add and that's it um, and you, you, you save it you do save I, I save a, a heck of a lot of time not having to research what people are asking on Google etc by using TubeBuddy uh, another thing about it is it allows you to do custom thumbnails which are fantastic as well um, so you can go in you can take a still or you can upload an image you can add text to it and you can do custom thumbnails as long as you don't click, create clickbait because that will actually mark you down so um, in essence there's those two elements I would say just quickly go back to one thing about YouTube when people comment on your videos reply yeah that's a mess so just, just just to go back to that but remember yeah that the, you always get the idiots ignore them um, but it's essentially uh, the one thing that I uh, one thing that frustrates me a lot is the fact that people don't actually and I think it's a lack of understanding so you know it, it's to say it frustrates it's, it, it, it's more frustrating that they don't know is, is the amount of tools that Google provides you know um, where you can you can quite simply I could post I do post quite a lot I do it for clients as well articles nearly every day I can post an article on video marketing every day by simply using uh, Google Alerts saying to go into Google Alerts, say I want I want you to tell me every time there's a news article on video marketing now they'll be global because I can set it to be global it could be UK as well but I have global because video marketing is a global thing so the, the amount of tools that Google actually has that people don't utilize uh, is, is quite frustrating for me in the fact that they, that they don't know about them so I recommend sitting down going onto your Google account and having a look drop down the, 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 the waffle yeah click on the waffle drop it down drop it down show more and go to the full page and have a look at exactly what they've got there um, because it is quite extensive um, even even to the point where you can um, they, they create they don't do Google Translate anymore, but I'll use it as an example where you could go and get Google Translate and stick it on your website. And they don't do it anymore because the browser's actually got it built, built into it um, for that capability, which is why you get that Translate option come down all the time. Well, that's with Chrome anyway. So yes, have a look at Google and really, really, really pay attention to what tools are there because there's loads. Thank you. Well, we'll make sure we'll put those in the, in the show notes <laughs> and below this video at terms where you, you've mentioned. It's been absolutely great. Well, listen, Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, um, thank a great you very time. much. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's been fascinating. I love talking about video marketing. So, and YouTube. <laughs> you may have noticed I get quite excited. Anyway, so if our viewers and listeners have got more questions for you, where yeah. can they go to find out more about you, Clockwork Eye, and get in touch? Well, they can give me a call. Uh, is the number going to be in the, in in the notes? It or? will be, but you can also read. Um, uh, but they could call me on 01535 if they want. Yeah, that was a bit X factory, that one. Oh, they can email me uh, info at clockworkguy.co.uk um, or visit the website clockworkguy.co.uk. Um, that, that's fantastic. Or, um, yeah, just connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm on there. So, uh, yeah, that'd be good. Thank you very much. Well, a big thank you to your counters well for coming oh, all the you. way uh, to share, you know, this uh, interview with me. Big thank you for you to you, Gareth. Uh, oh, good, good luck with the, the festival. In fact, we'll give you a bit of a plug in on the show notes yep. as well for, for the festival. Can I just say one quick thing about it? Of course you can. We're, we're, we're at the, it's going to close soon, but we're open for entries and you're going to love this. Um, made in the Air Valley category has been created especially for the festival this year and Simon Beaufoy, uh, Oscar winning uh, film writer, has uh, donated a prize which is actually a day on set with him in the UK and if you don't know who he is he wrote uh, Full Monty, he wrote uh, Slumdog Millionaire, he wrote 127 Hours and he also did the screenplays for The Hunger Games. So he's, he's, it's, it's no price to be sniffed at. So if you've got anybody's got a film that they made in or about the Air Valley, then they can enter it by going to Ratma, R-A-T-M-A, filmfestival.com. And they haven't got long. 
<laughs> thank you so much. We'll, we'll do a bit of a plug in, yeah. uh, plug on social as well. Oh, so, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. For our viewers and listeners, a big thank you for your support for watching this video. Listen, if this has been helpful to you, let Gareth know, and I'm sure you'd be more than happy um, to receive some of uh, their early attempts for feedback and advice, because this is the guy who's been there, done it, and has got a t-shirt to say the least. And bye-bye for now. Bye. Thank you.